be the 22nd, but I don't think we have an agenda. I don't think we have a uh, quorum for that meeting. So, because you, Mike, won't be here, um, and you won't be there. So that that's that. We're so close, yeah. we're gonna so continue it to. Uh, oops. We're gonna need even well, despite having new members as well. We're gonna need people that have seen the project in the past. Thank you. So continue it to January, February twelfth uh, meeting. Someone wants to make that motion. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. All right. Okay, town forms. All right. So I'm gonna move something up from our old new business, which is the town forest. We have a minor plan change yes. coming in front of us. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Bill Sullivan, chair of the town forest committee. And we do a, a minor change, a, a requested amendment to the uh, termination of applicability. Uh, there's, just to orient you in the town forest, the compost, sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> the, 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 the compost is here. And we come up um, down the road from the compost area to the causeway that we've had some discussions about that then leads to the council ring up in this area. There's a fairly deep ditch, just an erosion ditch. Let me, let me grab that picture. So it's right here. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the first one next to the mineral pool. So this is the first one you're going to meet. So that's oh, okay. the one you just pointed to. Okay. So that's the fairly deep ditch that um, I talked to Paul Jackson, who okay. is the uh, fire assistant fire chief. Yep. And he said that um, it's, uh, he considers it a hazard if uh, he was needed to call, go in there for safety measures. And I think there was some discussion on a site visit that I wasn't at on Friday, uh, and, the, and the loggers had an issue about this mm -hmm. also. So um, what did they say about it? I was not there. I you weren't there I either. There. I, I think it's, it, although it looks like it's just a puddle, it is probably six to eight inches deep. Yep. And all those trucks going through it would probably cause more damage more than to put some stone in there. So that's. Excuse me, is this like a causeway that was. Is, is there wetland on either side of this road? Yeah, let's go back to the plan. Uh, and you can see area the wetland area right here and here. Um, but this one's really the one that has the wetland on both sides of it. So, so it's. So repair area B. That's the area. Yeah, that be the that when, you're, when you're walking out there, that's the yeah. area where like the pine trees are all perfectly aligned on the, the right side as you're walking out, right? You just get over the hump of the, the compost area. Right, that, yeah, the compost area, they're coming down, down to, then you take the left that goes yeah. onto the, the, the causeway that we had talked about putting you know, some kind Timber of maps. Yep. yep. So, yeah, right, this, this area is before you get there. Okay. But, like, the reason I asked is, on both sides, I know it's pretty wet out there as a rule, but I wonder if that is that just a swale that always existed, or is it just kind of over time sunk? I, so, what's caused that issue is that if I go back to the picture, I'll let you know. Um, so, that is basically a stream in the springtime that probably erodes that center portion of the road, and um. Which one is it? I don't know if I have the, the plans. See, no, and no. Yeah, so there's a this is a big wetlands complex over here. It's it's probably 40, I don't know. It's probably 40 feet by 80 feet, and it has the look of a vernal pool. But um, National Heritage knew that when they when they wrote their letter about this project. So I think that's what the erosion's about. So they're going to throw stone in this area. So what's going to happen is probably going to work for this project, but um, the runoff is going to find the next lowest spot or just work to the left or right of where the stone is. Would it go through the stone? Oh, and I was assuming that the stone would fill up the sediment at some point. And okay. Yeah, so for a while it would, yeah. Is there any reason 
uh, why they uh, wouldn't consider a log bridge here? Well, that's exactly what we had there in the first place. And uh, uh, Paul Jackson uh, said that uh, he was unsure if that was um, something that his trucks could get over and uh, in, a, in a timely fashion. So he, he wasn't uh, he wasn't comfortable with that solution to get over this area here. I think when you, it's kind of putting all the points together that this is done when the ground is frozen. If it's done when the ground is frozen, the log bridge would fill in so that you would have a log on the roads. Mm. It's moved. So you can fill it with some kind of small riprap. Why would never road again? Just flow and have to, and you can try one whenever you wanted to. Yeah, they're going to use uh, two inch stone. Yeah. So he's got. Um, yeah, he's got a. Two inch right here. Two inch. Two inch. Pretty coarse. Yeah. Oh no. Show them what the uh, Tennessee Valley the people used over on. Uh, two inch minus stone. Beaver Road. Articulating concrete mats. Those would work there. Here's the other section, um, which is uh, area B. Right, that repair area A, to, to my knowledge, that's constantly had um, over road flow mm -hmm. from, from the wetland to the south of that. It's just constantly been trying to drain. It's trying to make some sort of connection between the two. Right. <coughs> no, that was clear. Uh, but it, it, and what I saw was that it was an isolated area, and it there is. was a in this area here yeah. there was a berm between this bigger one right. and this small one. So once the water goes down, it, it must stop. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was there when we walked this during the spring. So, so area B, if anyone wants to look at that, is here. And again, another hazard called out by Paul Jackson, who felt like, you know, probably could get through it, but if something happened where he lost control or then they went over the side, there would be a big problem. So there's ruts in there, and uh, he, he called that out, and I believe it would be the same thing for the lockers. I don't think that's just, this is pretty simple. Bring it up to, to great to level it out. <coughs> with so the, these the are both version. a better access than the previous plan had proposed. It's the same route. Oh, is it the same route? Yes. I guess I was okay. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> mistaken then, in my understanding. So they're also going to put in some erosion control or along that area that you discussed, where the where the water is constantly going across the road and. Um, he calls out that the first area is 8 by 15, the other one's 8 by 100, and we'll look at this at the at the end. But I was um, I don't think I didn't mind if they left the erosion control in place or took it out because it would form its own berm. Yep. Okay. So for the this area B, this is just filling in the ruts. It's not like. Raising it, or what? It's just filling in the ruts. It says bring the existing depressions to grade. This is signed by uh, the director of public works. So they're not going to do any major work out there. They're just going to fill in the ruts. Okay. Do you know at what point this is? This portion of the work is going to get complete. This would be done by DPW before the logger shows up. It's the only thing I would say here, separate from everything else, is is in line with this change. Is do we have some sort of ability to make sure you're notified, like around when this is happening, so that whether it's before or right after, we're able to kind of make sure we we see what's going, we can see it and. There's still a site visit that I have to take before the work starts. Yeah. And we can but this review is, this at the same time. This is a little bit separate, right? Because this work's being done by DPW versus work that's going to be contracted and, and done by a, a 
a, some, a, a separate entity, a contractor. So mm -hmm. this is almost like a, a, not a different project for them, but from the standpoint of who has control, who's doing the work, who's paying it, it is really a different a, a different project. So it almost requires two site visits from that standpoint. Sure, um, I could add that. Uh, also, I was just going to amend the. Uh, just put an amendment or addendum to the uh, existing determination with uh, Jane's letter, that yep. plan right there, and I could just say that I have to be at this, a site visit after the work is done. Okay. So, so uh, the other thing is I see this, if, maybe no one's thought about it now, but maybe you, you may if you think about it. I don't see this tied to the logging work. I see that scouts use the area and other people use the area, and it's a uh, health and safety issue no matter what. So this can happen at any time when DPW is uh, comfortable with getting out there. If, if this project weren't going on and one of those trees fell and somebody was hurt, we'd need this access anyways. And any of the groups that are out there, you know, Reading Rec or whatever, if there's an emergency, we need to get emergency vehicles in there quickly. So important. Great. All right. I was walking this trail recently <clears throat> and the area between that loop um, that repair area A is part of and Stroud Ave, like even the hill from that loop to the top of the compost, that recently, which I just noticed happens to also be outside of the 100 foot, they, they put in fresh crushed stone there. There were some horrible ruts from that top of that hill yeah, coming down. All the way down. I remember that from coming the site down last year. And um, and just walking out of there in the last week, it's like crushed I like I just realized as I was walking, I said, wait a minute, this is easy to walk on. You know, I'm not breaking my ankle falling into a rut. So they did a nice job putting in the crushed stone and you know I sort of inspected the that as I went up the road. You know, I kept it to the road Filled it, made it straight, made it flat. It looked good. So, any other comments? Anything from the public? Sure. Do you have anything else? No. Uh, I think that. Uh, Your motion. Motion to approve my plan change for the town forest project. Second. All those in favor? Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. Okay, hey, being past 705, we'll move on to 364 Lowell Street. Uh, this project as well has been continued at the applicant's request. Uh, do I hear a motion to continue? Make a motion to continue yes. 364 Lowell Street until we have a date. It's going to be February 12th. February 12th, okay. meeting. Second. All those in favor? Uh, not being quite seven. No. We're good at seven ten. Uh, it's past seven ten, so we can move on to two fifty nine to uh, sixty seven Main Street, and this project as well has been continued at the applicant's request. I hear a, a motion. We have a motion to continue to fifty nine and two sixty seven Main Street until February twelfth meeting. Second. All those in favor? I think you're a little ahead of yourself. That was 75. My math is different than yours. I don't know. First two are 10 minutes, the second one's 15. Starts but after starts 10. At, starts at 10. Starts after 10 minutes. Yeah. Don't, add, don't add the 15 for that one. <laughs> but we can't quite get to the next one on the agenda, which is Zero Haverhill Street. So we'll move on to some of the old new business. Um, I think we, um, Chuck, was there one that you want? Uh, I think it was Veterans Way that we can talk about. We received some new uh, new documentation for a minor plan, uh, plan at Veterans Way. This is lot four. Uh, I believe you guys have stuff in front of you. Chuck, I don't believe the applicant is here, but you have an explanation of what, what this is? Sure. Um, so 
So the applicant is, um, this lot four came in with its own order of conditions. Um, that Oh, it was 2017. I'll go. I'll go with my memory. And in 2017, they didn't. They thought they were going to get gas on the street, but um, I think they couldn't wait for the gas to come in. So they they're using uh, LP. And so each each house needs a tank now. So that's what this minor plan's about. Minor plan change. So the applicant uh, Mass Equity came in and stated that uh, lot four is ready to go and they need to put in this uh, underground tank here. And so this line here is not the 35 foot line. So the 35 foot line, 25 is on, the erosion control is on the 25 and the 35 is this line here. And it comes through there like that. So it's tanks right here. So it's outside of the 35 foot area. It's uh, 15 feet from the house. And that's uh, regulations from the fire department. And I um, have a minor <coughs> plan change to accept that project. Um, and I recommend that we do because it meets our setback standards. Some of the things that came up was um, the yard's quite small. There's a retaining wall right there. Uh, this not only goes in the ground, but it has a small hood on the top of it for filling, and it, it's, it's the best spot. Needing to be 15 feet away, the side of the house doesn't work, and the front of the house doesn't work either because um, there's an ejector outside the buffer on the left-hand side of the house. Um, so. It's really a backyard installation, and this would be the best the best place for it. This is a above ground, but it's going to have just like a concrete pad foundation. Or no, it's buried. It's, it's, this is it's, actually buried. Yeah. Okay. It's in the ground, and it's only going to have that cover that's yeah. above ground, so that you can act access it access and it. fill it. Have any questions from the commission? Me. Any from the public? I hear a motion. I a motion to, to approve the minor plan team for Mass Equity Investments LLC for Lot 4, Nifton's Way. Second. All those in favor? All right. So, uh, I told Mike before I told the applicant that I um, they could get here later. But since we took this on now, I have to text the applicant and, Go ahead and let, let the that person know, know that, um, uh, that we don't need them anymore. So that's what I'm doing here. on will be not quite 735 we'll continue with um, the old new business Chuck is the you have one you prefer that's ready do you want to do the letter yeah we have the we can do the letter we can do um, Bolton Street it's a uh, it's a request uh, an applicant came in at our last meeting and he had some work that he did and we signed off on his certificate of compliance um, but during the sale process, one of the attorneys found another order of conditions that was outstanding and hadn't been closed out. Um, 
but for the process and its ability to move forward quickly, luckily, no work had been done. So we're going to sign this certificate of compliance, just checking off that no work had started. So. All right. I move we issue a certificate of compliance for 16 Bolton Street. Second. All those in favor? Do we need to sign that? Yeah. I didn't know I didn't know how fast you were going there, Mike. It's unusual. I know. Right? You it's want me to slow it down, Chuck? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Right in order, how about 97 Batchelder? A request for certificate of compliance. DEP file number 270 Alright, uh, 97 Batchelder, let's see what I have here. I have a set of plans. Uh, we viewed the site yesterday on the 7th, and I was there with uh, the chair. Mike Lynn and David Panette, and we walked the site. We saw that the grass was established, uh, had been uh, turf that was rolled out. The uh, fence was in place. We counted the granite bounds. We counted the um, we counted the high bush blueberry. We looked at the um, stream and one of the conditions was that it needed to be uh, just lightly kept from, from uh, I don't know, collecting blockage. collecting blockage, yeah. So there was a couple of sticks, pretty small, like twigs that were in it, um, and then there was some, there was some trash and some bottles beyond the fence area and what I would call the wetland area. It's kind of a forested wetland, so it's drier than uh, you, would, you would expect and uh, I contacted the applicant and I asked him to take care of those things and uh, he said he, he said he would do that he also said that he may be showing up tonight for this oh, there he is in, in, in his winter gear <laughs> yeah um, John Gillis 97 bench on the road um, I did go up into that area today and cleaned up the couple of cans and a couple of bottles uh, I also uh, removed all the loose sticks and stuff that were crossing the streamway. Uh, there were a couple of roots going across. I didn't want to touch those. You know, the leaves are going to get caught in there. I, I'm not going to do anything to that. Um, but I did take care of those items. Um, and there was other, a, um, I mentioned about the stone bound, right about grand, picking those up. Uh, I didn't get to that today. I don't know if I'll be able to do that until the spring, but I will pick those up so they're a foot above grade um, to the top and put the placards on them. Um, Chuck, did you have a bring placards tonight, or should I grab those? You might time? want to grab those when you pick those up, because I don't see them in the first couple of pages here. Okay. All right. so. so I don't know if Chuck mentioned that one, but just so basically the the granite bounds were in and where we indicated, um, but they were set pretty low, so there's a little concern that they might just get buried. Um, so one of the, as he mentioned, one of the things we asked him to do was lift them up. Um, I don't think my personal take is I don't think that's a reason to, to hold up any sort of certificate of compliance. I think that's he's done what he needs to do. I don't know if Dave, based on what you saw, if you had any other different recommendation or thought. I didn't have any concern for withholding the certificate of compliance. Yeah. <coughs> Sounds good. Can I hear a motion? Make a motion that to issue the certificate certificate of compliance. 97 batch on the road, uh, DP filed 270 0427. Second. All those in favor? Right. Okay. Here you go. So 
It's good out there. Thanks. Nice. this weekend. All right, still being a little too early to, to go on the next item in the agenda. Um, I suppose we can do the, the next item that we have on the old new business, which is, um, I don't know if it, it might not be on the agenda that was sent out, but was on Chuck's latest agenda is the MVP letter of support. Um, so I can give you a little background on this. Back Maybe before the holidays, Andrew McNichol reached out to Anika, myself, uh, and Chuck, um, and uh, indicated they planned on submitting for an MVP grant application, which is Municipal, municipal Vulnerability Preparedness, um, and asked for um, a letter of support from the Conservation Commission um, for that, that grant. Um, basically what the grant does is, I don't know if you guys saw the letter, but uh, Chuck, yeah, I don't know, do you remember exactly what this is for? Um, I, uh, so it's an application, oh, so this is in support of the town applying for being a member town in the DEP's registry. You have to sort of enlist through this process to be um, um, an MVP designated town and once you are so designated you therefore become eligible to a large number of grant opportunities to um, protect um, town environmental resources so it's there's there's um, a variety of different grant opportunities and different grant scheduled windows um, and they had until January 10th, January, January 15th, 15, to, um, to apply. That was the next kind of application deadline. Um, and not all towns have taken advantage of this yet, and it just basically positions the town to be more eligible for uh, grant monies to protect environmental resources. So Chuck was gracious enough to put a letter out together and... Um, and we, were, we yes, reviewed it, sent it back to him. Yeah, he sent it out to the group mm -hmm. after that. And um, I think is, <coughs> is there any downside to this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't think, I don't think there is. I, I think there's, uh, you know, a lot of towns are, are doing that. And, you know, Anika had given me a call, would you call like a day before? Every, you know, I mean, I'm sure the others were talking about it, but as soon as we were informed that we were going to do this, I think Anika had mentioned it, like, the day before. You said, yeah, I would say you, you talked about this. So it was pretty yep. coincidental. Yep, I'm glad the town's acting on it. It's going to, you know, anything that lines the town up for more resources. And this particular municipal, municipal vulnerability preparedness grant program is is for planning for climate change resiliency and implementing priority projects. So the state awards communities with funding to complete vulnerability assessments and develop resiliency plans. So helpful. All right. So all set. All set. So can we hop on to given that time and to um, Simon's way is it is it time for that I'm wondering about why don't we start with the continuance we can start General Hebel sure we'll start, oh no you can do the continuance it's not timed yeah um so the the there's two things before us in front of for Simon's way off Simon's way um there's, there's an aspect of this that's later on in the agenda, um, but I think we can start with, I believe in our old new business, something added was a continuance to the notice of intent that currently exists. Um, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, thank you. Mark Slager from Allen Engineering here on behalf of uh, the Red and Rifle and Revolver Club. Yeah. Uh, several years ago, the commission issued an order of conditions for work on various ranges out there. That uh, order is expected to expire on February 22nd. We do have some minor things that still need to be done out there. Uh, significantly is the uh, replication plantings or mitigative plantings. Um, the order didn't have any um, alteration of wetland, but we did remove some trees, so this was to, uh, to mitigate for the tree loss. Uh, obviously, we can't do those, do those plantings until the spring, uh, so we do need an, uh, an extension. Um, and also, later on, when we discuss the plan modification, that would also need to be uh, uh, covered under the extension as well. So we're requesting a one-year extension of the order. I don't see a problem with that. I move to um, approve the one-year extension. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. We'll ask you to come back up in five minutes here. Okay. Um, Zero Haverhill being 735, I think we can move on to Zero Haverhill, uh, Haverhill Street. This is another notice of intent that is going to be continued at the request of the applicant. Um, do I hear a motion to continue? Motion to continue Zero Haverhill Street till the February 12th meeting. A second. All those in favor? Jeff, have we heard anything back from DEP about this? Not about this. Okay. So, um, I should... <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so, did, did we get an official letter? No, but I, I did get a call from Mike Abel, who, the commission. I have a picture of him if you want me to put it up. Oh, it's okay. We know who it is. So, um, I did get a call, and he was just wondering generally about this project and what they were doing out there and he said he was going to talk to uh, Steve Erickson or Maureen Harold. Um, I told him what we were presented with at the last meeting and that they had continued for tonight. I think that's what he was mostly interested in. Is this going to be just to get the timing down so they have the 10 days to appeal or to, you know, you know the DEP. So, um, he, when he found out that it was going to be continued, he was relieved, and he's going to contact Steve and Maureen about it, uh, and then get some more details from them. That's that's all I know, but nothing uh, on the portal, so nothing official. So I think the things that they're worried about are not in the application. So if Steve stuck to what's in the application, he he's not. In, in any danger of uh, crossing DEP, uh, specifically filling wetlands, uh, is most of what the conversation was about. But that's not in the application. Uh, Chuck, do you want to, uh, since it's not quite time to to go off some of the way again, do you want to talk about the? Uh, Administrator's report. We had a oh sure emergency response. I don't, I don't know if it. So we we had a call that uh, Laura. Yep, there you go. So we had a call from the fire department that a hydraulic line had busted on a trash truck when it was trying to pick up. When it was trying to pick up and dump a cardboard container and it spilt about nine gallons of hydraulic fluid and that hydraulic fluid was 35 to 40 feet away from a storm drain and most of it ended up in the storm drain or on its way to the storm drain so they were able to put out some booms and some absorbent and they cleaned it up now, Anika went down the day of the spill, and me and Dave were there to kind of look at the aftermath. Um, so I don't know if you want to step in at this moment, but 
and, and tell them what you saw during that day. But the aftermath was uh, pretty pretty impressive. Um, Always happens on New Year's Eve, right? Yeah. Something like yeah. this. <laughs> so here's the here's the container, and sure. there's a there's a small sheen in front of it of oil, but I'm not saying that's from this oil spill because further on down, which as you come to the bottom here of the picture is where the storm drain is, and that was completely clean and completely dry, and there was nothing even in the crevices of um, you know of the asphalt. So that must be something new, and, uh, and some other pictures about the soil spill. So yes, uh, there's the storm drain, and you can see right there. There's a little rope, and it's so there's one of those absorbent snakes inside there, trying to make it all work. Um, the last one just shows you, I'm trying to show you what's in it. You can't really see it, but there's a probably six to seven feet of that of that snake in there, collecting all that. Um, so I think what I saw was uh, that it was cleaned up and it was pretty professionally done. I did contact, I reached out to the engineer over at RMLD in an email asking for, um, you know, anything, any information he had and uh, he hasn't got back to me yet. So I will, if there's anything to it, I'll get back to you if there is. I, I don't think there's going to be. Do we need to sign like an emergency? No. This didn't come in front of us. And you want to jump in and tell them what you know about these site cleanups under exactly. under 10 gallons? Um, so yeah, a waste management company um, truck was emptying the trash. A hydraulic line went on the on the truck itself. Um, <coughs> and the quantity of that alone wouldn't have create created a an emergency response, but the fact that it went to, I mean, they would have cleaned it up, but didn't make it a, an issue f from a hazardous waste standpoint. It was the release to the storm drain that increased the potential to get it moving off site that cut was the bigger issue. Um, luckily, it was a waste management <coughs> company that did, that had the accident, so they had a lot of resources to call right away. When I got there, they were doing all the they, they must have um, spread some absorbent material on the pavement surface because they were sweeping it up and vacuuming it up. Um, they were vacuuming out um, giant vac truck. They were vacuuming out that storm drain. Um, and an, a representative of, a pro, of an environmental professional who works for RMLD was there on site observing and um, told me that he was going to he was going to make them double check um, an additional down gradient storm drain and an additional down gradient um, manhole to see if any additional product had moved and migrated and to back that out. And, um, and they had already set up um, capture booms at the discharge point. And I was telling Chuck that the discharge from these drains is a, a ditch between the MBTA line and, and RMLD's back lot. It's not it's not the epitome of what a, a healthy native drainage ditch would look like. It's full of uh, of of is it the knotweed, the bamboo help me out. Japanese knotweed. Jap it was full of Japanese knotweed. It was at the toe of a riprap slope from the train bed. You know, I said we're you know on one hand, we're protecting this, like this isn't. But um, th but they set up the booms, and um, I guess I'm just looking, interested to hear a follow up of you know how much did they continue to pump, um, what are their next steps, who's going to stay on top of it, mm -hmm. and just sort of you know monitor how they. <coughs> um, it's not even on the state listed database yet so you know it was just last week so the data hasn't been uploaded I don't think to the state sites but fortunate situation just because you know a waste management company 
did the accident. They're constantly cleaning up this type of stuff. So, you know, I don't think it was, you know, additional liability to RMLD. It was clear who was responsible for it. So I, th I think it was kind of the best outcome of a bad situation, just in how it happened. So I guess the, the question is, is there any other, you're expecting to hear some follow-up of what? I just, I'm just expecting to hear some follow-up of, you know, do they continue to see um, if the oil went to that storm drain and if they didn't vac out all the oil? Yep. Are they seeing any evidence of, of a, a significant residual? But with nine gallons, that's not... I'm not saying that's nothing, but that's not a huge amount of oil. Um, so, so uh, I, I guess at the in the end, are is it fair, Chuck, to ask them just for a little letter or write up, just kind of saying this is uh, fully summarizing it and sending it to the commission, so just so we have something for our records of yeah, we've we've seen it. That's what we think. So if you, even if we don't get that report, we can get the report from their center of DP. Yeah. So that would have all that information in it. Yeah. yeah. And I think either or would, would work. And I, I could send that out to the commission or uh, I, I don't know when it's going to when it's going to be written or when it's going to be uploaded. But I can uh, go ahead and uh, keep trying to get a hold of people that were closer to what had happened so I can uh, you know, get the information. Yeah. So if 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 for some reason it ends up being a long-standing issue, which um, it it shouldn't, um, then you know we um, then they might have to come back to us anyway because the work Would might require a permit. Yeah. So so I th mm. it'd be good to um, yeah we can. We can try to keep tabs on it from our end. Okay. All right. All right. It being seven, at least seven forty, we can move on to Off Simmons Way and another uh, 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 minor plan change for the Reading Rifle and Revolver. Uh, and go ahead. The applicant <coughs> would like to present what the changes. All right. Twenty twenty meeting, maybe. Thanks, Mike. And you know, when I used to be over there, Chuck, it was easier. Yeah, it was even very helpful when you sat next to me. You sit quieter. Just lean over. Is this good? Do you want to? That's good right, right there. there. Sure. Um, you may recall the original order of conditions was to construct um, this new range here with some barriers and a sand impact area along with some separating walls to divide the range into three major ranges. Uh, at the time we had intended on maintaining the 100 yard uh, backstop in this area. Um, as things went along we started to do some modifications to get ready to to upgrade and we realized that there was some significant uh, management and repair that needed to be done to the berm in this area specifically over in the buffer zone here so what the club decided to do was uh, abandon this portion and make it um, put a berm down in here and just have a 25 yard range for you know in various target holders uh, for up to 25 yards mostly for um, for handguns uh, and we have plenty of range over here for 100 yards, uh, plus we have plenty of other areas. So really wasn't losing anything here. Um, we could just put the targets here because we do have backstops and whatever here, but we figured if we put in a berm here, it would catch everything and we wouldn't be ripping up this area next to the wetlands. So I think overall this is a, a big improvement. It's going to have less overall impact to the buffer zone in the wetland area over here. So we're uh, requesting that we um, construct this which is within the buffer zone um, it's not going to require any vegetation removal it's part of an active range area anyway so um, it's just basically eliminating uh, much of the range area in that location 
so we're requesting a the, the uh, commission accept the plan change as a minor modification. I had a question. Um, I looked at it. I I thought it was um, pretty straightforward. The uh, the footings. How much excavation do you think you're going to have to do to lay the footing blocks? About a foot. Okay. So. There's not going to be a lot of soils generated. No, is anything that's any soils that are generated just going to be put spread in, out or put in the, the sand? Well, we, yeah, we could put it in the uh, in the sand burrow too because it's all sand. Anyway, all sand, so. right? Yeah. Yeah, that was my only question. Any other questions? Very straightforward, Chuck. Yeah, no, I, I've been to the site. I don't know if, I know Anika went out with me once to the site. I remember this area. Dave, are you there? Dave, Dave's at the site. Um, I, you know, I think in between those two outer, um, you know, walls, that, you know, that's an area that's a, a you know, a, a good area to, to do work in. It doesn't, you know, it really doesn't need a lot of conservation oversight, or if any at all. Uh, so I wasn't concerned at all about this project, knowing what it was, and having been out there, active, active range, uh, basically all sand. I'm fine with it. You getting a lot of use on the new, the newer range, range one? Um, it's not open yet. Um, the, been used a little bit by the. Um, Police and the ATF yep. for some training, but uh, to my knowledge, not open for club use yet. There's still some minor work that needs to be done. Any questions from the public? I hear a motion. Make a motion to approve the minor plan change for uh, running rifle and revolver club. I'll second. All those in favor? Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. What's Casella? I didn't know we had a red yeah. 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 the uh, company oh, that it's actually the it's their yeah. truck. Got it. That uh, to the uh, skating ring. The Hable Street near St. Athanasius Church. So is it do you feel it's late enough to start I fifteen oh three? I think yeah. it's late enough to start fifteen oh three. Uh so the next item on the agenda, this is minor plan change for 1503-1505 Main Street. DP number 270-0704 and 270-705. The applicant is here. Uh, yes. Present the, the changes. So, Andy, I couldn't find the plan that had both plot A and B on it, so I only have B here, so when you want me to call B up, that's what we're ready for. Um, well, the first, got one, a paper the first plan. one we gave you, yeah, I see. Yeah, so and the commission has paper copies, which is great, and you can talk about it, but I can, I can put B up when we're ready, and I think B has you the have most B. of the issue. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. B's the one who, B's. He has the foundation shift. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when we we did a site walk yesterday uh, at 1503 and 1505 Main Street, and, and let the applicant just say what. Well, let me just set it up. Okay. Go ahead. It, it works this way. You've got you've got a story to tell. Go ahead. I can yeah. tell. <laughs> <laughs> this the last four years is what we did. You are, Anyway, so we were at our, we did a site visit and we viewed lot A and lot B on Main Street. And my first impression when I drove in, it was probably the cleanest site I had ever seen. Um, it was, uh, you know, had a little bit of snow on it, but there was no trash around and the foundations were in place and the trees had been cut and there was no debris and there was no debris piles. There's no dumpsters, there was no trucks, there was no staging, there was no pile of whatever the next steps are. So it was it was a very clean site. Lot A was in the back and 
necessarily if it moved towards Main Street or towards Matera Cabin or you know, back to, um, I guess, where that vernal pool is, which is many, many feet away. I, that wouldn't be a problem, and it, and it really presented like that. Um, so I didn't really have an issue with, with lot um, A. The lot B, there might be more discussion about. It seemed to me that um, I thought it was moving closer to the line by five feet, and that um, it would impact some trees, or additional trees would have to come down. It would be a uh, possible deck and patio in the back that weren't talked about during the meeting. And so I was kind of concerned about all that once I saw the proximity. So in a nutshell, my A seemed to be okay. My B um, is uh, probably up for more discussion at this meeting. So, Andy, could you just introduce yourself and then take it away? Sure. Andy Bramhall, PLS, from Benchmark Survey in Stoneham. Town of Reading resident for 42 years. Um, so we're the surveyors responsible for laying out foundations. Um, what the Conservation Commission doesn't see kind of in the background is uh, on lot B, this foundation shape of the foundation changed a multitude of times uh, so what what in essence happened was uh, the CAD person that went into the CAD file to actually create the points to be laid out grabbed an earlier version and what that meant was the foundation as it got placed out there laid out was there was a four foot shift which was further away from uh, Main Street by four feet. And it slid on the axes of the uh, 30 foot wide driveway. So, uh, talked to Chuck two days ago, and we had, we had originally submitted the uh, plan, I guess, uh, the plan that you have in front of you, the paper copy, December 19th, and that showed the two foundations. Uh, on lot A, the one out in the rear, you can't see the difference because they're right on top of each other. There wasn't any file issues and so forth. Uh, so like I say, lot B, uh, the one out front, which is 1503 Main Street, uh, had the four foot shift. And just talking to Chuck Monday, I, th I think he asked and said, can you send me a drawing that shows, oh, there it is, okay, yeah. good. What, what actually took place. So, like I say, it was a, a slide four feet. Um, the good thing was that it stayed uh, at least 35 feet away from uh, the buffer from the uh, BBW. Uh, so we didn't pierce any of those uh, critical setback areas. Um, grading, we also, Chuck requested the uh, elevations of the two foundations and uh, the one out back hit for a hundredth of a foot which is about the thickness of a dime I was impressed um, and uh, the one out front uh, was 25 hundredths so as far as elevation goes uh, they were right on and uh, there's not any uh, excessive or additional uh, grading that's going to be uh, piercing the, the 25 foot setback. Open it, answer any questions you have. So we did a site visit, um, as Chuck was mentioning, on Tuesday. Dave, myself, and Chuck were out there, and um, it was icy, but we, we were able to make it around back. Um, you know, it, obviously, it's tough tough to tell exactly what, what's changed when, when you're out there. But the, the couple things that we did see is um, um, that are just worth worth noting is in the back, it seems like there is like a cutout for a doorway about where the 28 um, mark is. 
we're, we're talking on lot A? On lot B. On lot B. Basement walkout door. Okay, yep. Um, where the uh, toilet is? Okay. Yep. Uh -huh. And there's also a tree back there, probably pretty close to the roof, will be pretty close to the roof, kind of already leaning our direction in. Chuck's got a good picture of it here. Um, I think the stick is misleading. Is that a, is that a <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's not, not, yeah, that's that's not another tree, it. yeah. It's, 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 it's in the foreground. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's that one that you'd see but immediately to the you right. You can see all the trees are leaning in. Yeah, I mean, really everything okay. is leaning in. Um, like that one that's like the triple leader. Yeah. Right there, you see that the right, further right one to the right. And that's kind of standing straight up and down, but the two parts of that to the left. This one here. No, it's the next one. This one? Next one to the right. It's that one. Those are the ones that, when you're looking at that, that looks like when they frame that, that house out, that that's going to be a problem. Those trees. This is this and one. Yeah. That's... So, and uh, then the last thing that I would say is, is the other thing that we saw is right now it looks like, you know, just slight grading to the foundation. Um, so the, the right back, you know, right as you come away from the foundation, slopes down towards essentially the 35 foot line where the erosion controls were. Like a foot um, of grading, like half a foot. Something. Looked like it was probably evening out, making a nice flat area as they sat, you know, as they side cast for the footing to. Okay. They did. It was still sloped, but it was just, you know, relatively flat slope. Um, that's really, I mean, besides, you couldn't tell where the existing foundation was supposed to be. That was just a couple things that I thought were worth noting um, what we, that we saw. Um, so do you know if you met grades in the back from the proposed plan, or are you higher? What was the question? Did you meet the grades in the back from the proposed plan, or are you above that? Oh, I, uh, like in my email, I haven't shown any grades. Okay. I don't know that the, at least what Nika has here, I don't know that there were necessarily any proposed grade changes. There are 96 in there. The, fu the, yeah. the foundation, like I say, is, is in with, uh, within a quarter of a, a foot of where it was supposed to be, so. There is a little bit of grading um, on the inside, you know, between lot B and lot A. Do you want um, to have a question um, besides that basement walkout? Um, the proposed plan, now I don't know if you've seen it. Um, Notice the intent plan? Yeah, the proposed plan shows a deck. Um, oh, on the side. On the side. And if you move that house, you know, those four feet, I don't know where that puts the deck relative to that 35 foot. Right. Well, so I guess I'm just well, wondering. I'm not sure that it's, it's at least 35 feet. I guess, I guess I'm just sort of wondering, you know, is this, is the configuration of that going to change based on the 35 feet, or do you, do you anticipate any modifications it, to the it deck? It could if it, I mean, the, the, you know, the final deck exact dimensions other than what's on that plan, uh, yeah. we would ensure that it's at least a 35 feet. And then there's stairs that come down to the bottom. Um, did we put anything in the order of conditions for like, you know, pavers or a, I mean, I, it just says as per plan, but it does talk about, um, you know, out behind. So usually this is like the, the question you always ask. Because it always comes up. I it know, always ultimately, I know. you know, when we go to do the certificate of compliance, let's say, and somebody's living there and, and they've installed, uh, you know, that's worth 10 by 20 that's worth back patio, and we say, where'd this come from? Um, it's just trying to be realistic. 
When, so, what are you asking about specifically? <coughs> does the order say pavers? It does say does, patio. Does it prohibit or permit any particular type of, you know, groundscape between the back of the house and the um, wetland? Our regulations allow them to turn the 35 foot to the 25 foot, that 10 feet, into lawn. Beyond that, it needs to be natural vegetation. So, as is, in other words. Um, so this is actually a good point, because now I'm looking at this. I think this was not a deck. I think it is. I think this was a patio. I think this is a retaining wall. And these are steps oh. down to a patio. This is that, this is now what I'm recalling. I think this is the when we say pervious pavers, I think we had them cut off the that? edge here, and this was going to be a patio. It's too bad it isn't labeled. Maybe I have it labeled as another plan. Yeah, I I mean, I know the septic chambers and the pump go out this way. That's what that is. And this is road infiltration. And the grading for that. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't seem to be labeled. Do you happen to know? I didn't design it, so yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> say it's either a patio or a deck. Because down here it's down here it's called a proposed patio. Uh, wait, no, where's that? On A. <coughs> On A, okay. And see how this is a retaining wall? Exactly. To hold back the grade. I think this is So a it's the same wall. color. This is 82, 80. And then this gets down and it's in the 70, 78. Oh, uh, so maybe the design originally was for the walkout to be out there. To the right base, to the right side of the building for the proposed patio to be to the right. That could have been. It's not on the plan, but... Um, yeah, the, the patio is still going to be where it's shown. That's where it's going. And the stairs are just going to come from the top lawn? <coughs> yeah, I'm looking at the grading there. There's a 80-foot there's a, uh, yeah, 80 foot contour, some 80-foot contour, so this. It is funny that the, there's really no access. There's no access from the house to this patio. Like, so just so right now somebody's going to come out come this out the back. back right? and so and what's the first thing you want to do, right, is you right. want to continue this patio to be right here. Exactly. And, See and a little wraparound. I don't know if you've got the photos. There's not really a lot of room to actually have a wraparound. I mean, this thing slopes down pretty quickly off. Do you have the photo sure. of the tree? Um, Carl, do you want to see the proposed? Yeah. I got a couple copies of you guys. There you go, Okay. Yeah. That looks so narrow. Oh, oh, this is stairs, really. It does feel look like it's great. I have to be, I'm, I'm looking at a two foot uh, grade change and I'm yeah. looking at a uh, multitude of stairs. Yeah. So, and it's it, it, it is a uh, seven inch lift. The rise. stairs are a little deceiving about So, yeah, so I, I think that's kind of setting you off and saying, wow, uh, how deep down are you going with that? But, but that access in the back, uh, I don't see any evidence that that's on the the approved plans. No, and, it, and you know, now you see the grading here and it's, you know, they, they need a flat area for the patio. Is exactly is it coming? Is the rest of that coming up, or is that getting flattened near the foundation? Maybe. 
these are two foot contour intervals, so that's 80 and that's 78. So you can see a 75 and then it cuts through the 8. It's mm -hmm. high feet over there. It's 76 continuing around right there. Good question. Looks like it. So 76, then we've got a funky. Yeah, is that what the, is this? Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know what's happening there. And is this the 76? This is the 76, right? So I don't know how, how you actually make that work, but that's the 76 and 78 are meeting at this this corner of the set. Yeah, these stairs are doing a whole lot of things. You know, you probably want the patio to continue to the bottom of the stairs. You don't want to go patio the stairs grass. A little bit more information about the patio is kind of what I'm wondering about. Well, there might have been more uh, elevations on the engineering plan. Okay. There were several plans that went out. Some went to the engineering, some went to the oh. septic, and Whatever some went to the concrete. So I'm just going to open up the septic and see if they had any more information on it. So if it's, what's the date? My plans are May 31st, 2018. Um, let's see. I've got, are you talking notice of intent? Yeah, May 31st, 20, 2018. Oh, I've got, yeah, you, I've got here uh, January 14th, 2019. Revision oh. 2. That's the official, that's the official Is that a previous minor plan change? No, that's that, I know okay, of that was. February 13, 2019. Well, what do you got, Chuck? For the official I plans? I don't know if they've changed much. I don't know if this detail, this aspect of the plan has changed much, mm -hmm. but. I don't want to drag this out, it's my plan change, but. But it's a little bit, a little bit of a strange spot. Noting the uh, May 31st, 2018, revised through January 19, 2019, stamped by that very. So they may have made some other. Oh, yeah, so yeah, well, I go by the uh, actual revision date in the box. Yeah. That's too. January 14, 2019. Um, yeah. Revision 2, right? Revision 2. That's possibly where this all came up of when being more local. So, and maybe maybe we need to separate this piece of it out because I think whether or not the building moved or the foundation moved, we may be asking this question now at this point, anyways. Um, but the foundation is. I don't take issue with the with the building being moved. I, I think what's done is done, and it's not inside the 35 foot. So, um, you know, maybe some sort of um, mitigation for the additional trees that they expect to take. Um, I think the trees were going to be in the way no matter what. Yep. So uh -huh. if there's additional compensation from that, that's one thing. Um, a second thing is just. Um, um, get some sense of what that final patio. It's going to look like, and the grading yeah. around that. Just, right. And for me, Those I just want to know if the door. So three things in my mind: is the door in the back, and is is there going to be an attempt to try to connect, or what's going on back there? What's yeah. the proposal for what's going on behind there? <coughs> the patio, and, the and is there any change in grading? And then the tree. So the three, three oh, things. Is <laughs> that for? Tree, tree, back door, door uh, patio. Grading. Okay. But, well, you know, just, I, I don't think you understand. Mike was saying that um, we looked at the tree and, you know, first off, it's not, it's, they're not asking to take down the tree. Okay. But um, that five feet didn't seem to make a difference of how anyone would perceive that tree. So I don't think this change put that tree in more jeopardy of coming down. I no, think it was I it agree. was already was, in jeopardy of being close. removed as soon as some homeowner noticed it was hanging over their house. I don't know that the door and the patio have your 
are really impacted by this rotation either. I think these are just things that, as we're seeing this come together now, that the grading just isn't quite, you know, it, it's unique to see how they're going to actually get that patio right. out. Um, I think, yeah, so the, what's clear is don't cross the 35-foot line because we don't have anything on the approved plans that, that allow that, and that would be another change. So it's, if you're outside the 35-foot, we don't, I don't see a pathway coming from the back of the house, and there was evidence that was someone cut out a doorway in the back. So that seems to be something that needs to be addressed. So we need some information on that for sure. Yeah. And they're still at a point where if they want to move a back uh, basement walkout to the side of the house where this patio is proposed, sure. that's still a possibility. Yep. You're not so far gone that the ship has sailed, so. It makes more sense for the patio than just, I mean, it makes sense for the, the, the wetlands and, and not directing people back to it. It makes more sense for the patio. But so. it also might make a difference in terms of the internal configuration of the house. Yeah. You know, if that back door comes out of the boiler room, <laughs> why would, you know. Well, that's gonna, the thing, too. We're making you know, the you know, assumption exactly. that they're going to continue the patio to that door. Um, I've walked out basements onto uh, flagstones and grass. Yeah. Right. So, so I. And where it was placed before, there was enough room for a landing, you know, a small landing. But now, with this move, there's no room for that landing, or a little room for the landing. Um, yeah, it's getting. So switched. that's that's one of the things that got caught up in this this shift. Yep. Uh, it, I, you know, I don't think that we're remembering what the area looked like. It basically had some volunteer grass in there. That, you know, it's kind of an area that might have been turned into lawn at some point. It just it just has to come back to the commission if there's going to be a landing there. It's going to cross. Well, if anything's going to happen there, we don't see it on our plans. So we would need to know that. So that would be another minor well, if you, if, change. If it's, if it's graded grass, if it's been seeded, that's not an issue, correct? No, I don't think no, it is. Think, no, and that's and if, if somebody plopped down flagstones to get to the true patio yeah that wouldn't be an issue either no, that would be an issue that would be an issue yeah so flagstones yeah so any if, uh, some sort of uh, concrete pad or some sort of footing so any of that it's just how we call what we call out for um, uh, structures so everything's a structure moving up since when and I, th I think issue that's a uh, if that's proposed, we would want you to come back in for a minor minor plan change and tell us what, what exactly is planned. Because I mean, these are one of those things that, no flagstone, well, what does somebody mean? Is it a, a small, is it just like just it? All of a sudden it turns into a big walkway. And, and that's why we want to understand truly what would what that would look like, where it's going, how long it would be, how wide it would be. Okay, so if it's, if it's lawn, it just stays lawn, and we get a certificate of compliance, Right. They wouldn't have to come back in. Correct. Right. But if they need something that's like ADA accessible at the back because of who's living there, you know, and it has to be a certain width, oh, sure. it has oh, to be, if, you know. If we're talking ADA, things, we're talking uh, another whole exactly. thing. Exactly. Things change yeah. all the time. Yeah. And, and so we, it's going to depend on yeah. what we tend to say is we, we want to hear happens. if something is going to change because my perspective of what's a small change or what is, is consistent with this drawing is different from everybody else's mm -hmm. so. and, it, and it looks like that so um, and it might be the grading too so that grading in that area doesn't I'm not satisfied with how that transition is working and if yeah. you've met the grades or if we have grades on these plans and if, if it's going to change it seems like there's a, there's a that's one of the questions the, too the, the area to the side of the house just looks like it, it I don't see the patio developing quite yet, right? That that area of how and, and behind the house of just quite how. It was approved with a retaining wall and we knew that that area was going to be flat and then bingo, there's, you know, there's the patio area. That would make more sense, but what we're seeing is just this runoff from the front to the back. Yep. Picture of a patio which can't have that angle to it. And then the access to the basement is around the corner. Behind the, yeah. So those are all the concerns. Uh, but don't walk away and feel like these can't be approved. 
Um, right now, they're just just on the edge of the 35-foot buffer zone. Go ahead for a pen. Go oh, thanks. And um, <laughs> excuse me. And um, you would just need to come back and just kind of collect all these changes, show them to us, and then get an approval to cross the 35-foot line with what we call a structure would need a variance. Um, it's a big piece of property. Maybe there's something that can happen, uh, and you would just have to uh, come up with something. You could call me at the office, and we could talk over what's out there. I've been there enough to understand what you might want. But as long as you're keeping it very close, as close as you can to the 35 foot, even if you go over it, asking for the minor plan change and the variance, it's not impossible to uh, to get these things. And from the plans, it looks like there is that edge between the patio and the 35 foot line where maybe a retaining wall. Some room. Yeah, if yeah. You had some room to throw that retaining wall in if it, if it needed it. So that's what we're leaving here tonight with the question. Do yeah, so are, are we leaving with more, more questions? Are we going to give this location or I, I think it's uh, we yeah. want a little bit more information as to what the final plan is going to be, right? I know that was one of the questions I had is whether that was going to be connected. The back door that's coming out the back and the, the deck patio area that's on the side. So I, I think if it is, how can well, it be if the building's right at the 35? You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure if at this point, because it is just still a, a foundation and no floors have been poured and all that type of thing, that if I, I bring up these issues with the owner and say, hey, it makes more sense to go directly out to your patio. Let's cut this and make the doorway here instead of row, you know, in back where, the, where you're observing the uh, cutout. Then, uh, you know, I, I think we're good with that. And as long as the patio that they're proposing doesn't pierce the 35, it, it's the shape of what's proposed on this plan that saves them from coming back too. Yeah, I mean, from the standpoint of, I, I would, I want to make sure we have a, a true plan of like this is, you know, we know that that's what they're going to do. Um, if it's as simple as that, I mean, I've. Um, with the commission, I mean, it's, we can send, we can send a, a letter. We can send a letter to Chuck and just say, you know, after considering all these items here, this is what we're going to do. Um, yeah, I, I just want to chime in for a quick second. Here's how I see it: if you have paid a, a permit fee to apply for a minor plan change, um, paid, I mean, yes. we could tonight approve just the building foundation modification, which. I really appreciate from the developer, especially because often, you know, this move is so slight that it w when we would go out for our final COC chain yeah, you wouldn't approval, that. we would barely catch it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I really appreciate you guys coming in and being forthright about the plan change as the foundation's going in. Now, um, you didn't come to ask about the deck <laughs> also as part of that minor plan change. My suspicion is if that, and don't quote me, please, and don't take this as like, hey, we can do this. But um, my suspicion is if that deck were put in according to the original plan, I bet it would be right up against that 35 Probably. foot. Yeah. I think it would like almost like perfectly fit just, you know, at the 35 foot as is. It's just something that we're flagging as. Well, we're going to be we're going, you know, we're going to be watching that and make that? sure wanna... and make sure that stays at least the 35 feet. And and if and if you want to kind of tuck a change to that under this minor plan change and that permit fee, you can do that. I mean, we could continue the minor project and and consider a modified um, patio deck basement but that isn't actually before us tonight tonight is just the foundation right well, I, I see them linked I mean I think I, I don't see I them as yet. like I, I, I don't are, think you've discovered I don't think something they as you are I just I don't think to, we can make a decision on the foundation yeah. until we hear I mean this is just my day out until right. we hear about what that patio is going to look like what the yeah. back is going to look like I, I think just knowing what we know about the site, those those are all just linked together at this point that I wouldn't want to make a decision um I guess I, I, you know, I, I have some confidence on the 
you know, on the forthright nature of this applicant to come before us if there's an issue. Now that we've raised an issue, I have no problem approving the foundation move with the applicant knowing that we're aware of this deck and these stairs issue. And so they can come back to us I, I for I think I need to let you know that the applicant didn't come before us until I contacted him and told him that there was a change in the in the foundation. So does that change your mind at all? Um, a little bit. The, the letters still. The, the letter. Well, I'm the not letter saying they're not forthright people and all that, but but. Well, I mean, the letter the, still the, says it's a minor plan for the foundation change. Yeah. I I don't want to split hairs. I don't want to drag this out, but. However, however, the commission decides to go forward you know I'm fine with um, yeah I, I don't continuing I don't, I'm I, fine with approving the foundation change I, I could go either way I'm with the minor plan change for the foundation well, but so every, everybody so would agree that they want more information oh I definitely want more information as to what's gonna the finish is gonna so be. when I, I sign guess, off I on guess my building permit I, there's no building permit for patio or walkway, and the door is already in. So now we don't have the benefit of holding up a building permit, right. which well, it kind of always makes things come, come to conservation quicker. It, but it, it would have to be have like an, an enforcement. That's what I was going to say. It's like it would have to be an enforcement. Happens. No, you could do a site visit, and you could say, "Wait, I don't think this deck is." Or I, I, I think this construction well, here I don't, is inside you know what, the I'm, If you want, whatever you want to do is is fine with me. That's I'm just letting you know the options. From my perspective, I, w I think that the items are linked. I would prefer not to approve the minor plan change until we have this information. That being said, I think a plan, you know, if the applicant were to get a plan that basically says, look, here's the rotation. We're, we're keeping it out of the 35 foot. We're not putting anything in the back. If there was, or, or we're gonna, there's only gonna be an exit to the patio. If that was the plan that was before us, I don't necessarily think that the applicant has, I mean, from what I hear he, here, I don't know that the applicant needs to worry about coming in again. I think that's something that this group is gonna say, yeah, that's in line with what we've talked about previously. Nope. I just wanna actually see that on, a plan and that's what they propose that that's the final solution there's no other change can we approve it uh, pending further <coughs> information and plan designating the finish areas both behind and beside yeah, I like that. keeping in, in, in keeping in compliance with the 35 foot no build zone can I give a little input um, so as I look at this plan on lot B, the red line is the uh, original design, okay, for it that was based on the notice of intent. Mm -hmm. So that's where it should have landed up. Um, I'd have to look at the architecturals to see where's this rear door. Was it where it's out in the field currently, or was it supposed to be out onto the patio? Yeah. So. As I again, as I look at this plan, I look at the red line and say, okay, if somebody's going from that rear corner, they've got to basically go over the 35 foot line, which is a grading line, which is acceptable to do. The notice of intent shows the patio. And there's, you know, and, and again, this is a concept of a patio with certain dimensions on the plan. It's out past the 35 foot buffer. Now if they enlarge that or um, whatever, I would think that it need to come in for a, a, a change of plan. Um, we know exactly where the foundation is now. We know where the 35 foot buffer is. Um, and we you know, can ensure that that patio or deck, but maybe it's just a patio um, that you know doesn't pierce that 35 feet because they're required to do it. They're required to do that. So uh, when we do it, you know. So I guess what I'm hearing is, from that standpoint, 
you know, I'm fine with if we approve it. What I would expect is, uh, I would like I would like to see a final plan submitted, um, you know, with this approval, a final plan just submitted that shows the existing deck, that 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 shows the deck that we had, just where it would plot out now, and ensuring that it doesn't cross the 35 foot line. Because um, what you're saying, Mike, is if you offset the house with the new location with the deck shown on this older plan, it might be over the 35. It, it's yeah. pretty clear. I, it's pretty clear. So I, all I want to see is, can, is the shift. With I can the, tell you, it, yeah. you know, if, if you look at... If there's a change... I have a, I have a different... Go ahead. Just yeah, completely go ahead. forget about the plan. Just note the changes that we see and then ask the applicant to come in if... He puts in a landing outside or a walkway or changes the grading or anything like that. And if he agrees to that, we've identified him and he says, look, if, if anything happens in this area, I'll come in and I understand right now it's a it's going to be a change of plan. We kind of have a record of that. Yes. And we don't have to do this. because there, That's you, exactly what I'm getting at. I just heard it was a concept plan, so Mike, and it's going to change anyway, so why <laughs> redraw it? Well, there's, you know, again, there's not a code that says... He has to have, you know, uh, 200 square feet of deck with this house. He, he, he's he's got to meet the criteria, and if he goes over what he's shown on the plan, he's got to come back in for a plan change. Again, as I look at where the 35-foot setback is and the red dashed line and the way the deck, I don't know if you've got the full-size color plan in front of you, but... Yep. The deck is, is doesn't go to the corner of the the foundation. It, it's recessed, yeah. probably about four, three or four feet. It really comes down to not tracking mud into the basement. So is there going to be a landing, and are you going to connect the deck with the with the back stairwell? And if there's if the grades have to change, yeah, was that approved originally, or or is that going to be a change too? I mean, and then again, you know, those are. The, the things that the I things see. things that we would expect him to come back. And he talk. just says, look, I get it. Those change. I'll come back in. That's all we would need yep. from, from the applicant. Yeah, I'm, and I'm going to bring to his attention that, and I can check the architecturals, that, you know, was that a change that he put the, he decided, oh, let's walk directly out to the backyard versus walking onto the patio. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... Now I guess with that in mind. Can you make clear what the motion is? What are you asking for? Plan or that would help. I know we're doing something. Clear up exactly what. I think we're saying we so we're approving. Want me to try? Want me to give it a shot? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you summarize. You summarize what? So. Uh, so we'll approve, we'll approve the minor, product, uh, minor plan change on um, with the when we receive a letter from the owner noting that if he changes the plan to include a different grading, a landing, or a uh, pathway to the existing uh, doorway in the back. Um, We'll be able to sign this and, and send it to him. I don't know if I did that well. That, that would constitute a, another minor plan change. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anybody? The anybody? Is that that's a change and it has to be addressed by this commission. Yes. So. Anybody you wanna? You don't have to reset. Okay. You, you can just, just say, say make a motion. I, I make a motion as Chuck said. <laughs> I make a motion as Chuck said regarding 1503 and 1505 Main Street. A second. Second. Well, all those in favor? Cool. First one. All right. All right. So the thing is, is that at this Thank point, you. it's. Can I ask a question about the new Yeah. I know that both these houses are on septic. Yes. Was it, is there no main well, sewer in the main street, or just I'm just curious why that is? You have to pump it, and you have to it's also go into a high, uh, state highway and go across. Up, uphill to the gas station and then turn down that next side know, street, which is eluding me. Mill, absolutely. Yeah. That's how far that's it is. Close. That's, that's, it. That's, that's it. Oh. This, <laughs> this, this was like uncharted territory with septics. I guess. I mean, okay. we, we had to use Town of North Reading's septic. Uh, yeah, title 5, Tom. Title 5, 
uh, we had to use their board of health agent to uh, get everything approved. Now you're the northernmost property. Correct, and usually it's what happens on the board. But this is why we get the questions. And lack of services. And at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine how hard that would have been. Well, yeah. this is yeah. specific. It's crazy. Well, thanks for coming in. All right, no problem. Have a good night. All right, I think we've hit all the items on the old new business. No emergency permits. Chuck. Yeah. 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 these two year old plans? Chuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can hang on to it for the yeah. next meeting. I'm taking a picture. I don't have spares after this. I'm going to. No, I saved it. Uh, so, I don't know if you have some, I noticed that uh, the wrong page was printed out on this particular line. So I don't know if time for the essence on this. So it time to run down to the office and make the Go ahead. back page. Is there anything else? I, I think so. There's, there's, there's a couple items, but I, I think I'm. Um, um, move on to something that's not quite on the agenda that Chuck doesn't need to worry about, but uh, I, and Chuck's aware of. I got uh, five emails today nice. uh, indicating five separate new members of the Conservation Commission. What? What do they say? We have two new members and three associate members all approved as of the the uh, well, that's like been meeting change. last last night. Nice. And I believe one of our new members is here tonight. Good evening. Hi. Hello. John Sullivan. John, nice to meet you. John is your a full, full member. Yeah. Great. As of whenever I can get here on time to get sworn in by the clerk. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, so all of them have yep. to be sworn. They all got notification today. They all have to go get sworn in. Um, so there's two, there's two things people. that you generally have to do is uh, ethics. Ask. I know, right. Can't talk about it. <laughs> an ethics <laughs> review cool. and a That's great. open meeting law review. So the committee's picking up four? Five. 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 Three associates. So associate or non-voting yeah. members. Um, no, welcome. everybody's going to be elevated to yeah. voting during any meeting if you don't have a quorum. No, they can't. They can't. Associate no, they, members they can't are non vote They can voice their opinion. They can. No, they do it directly all the time. I'm not trying to challenge you. I just thought that was part of the way our town did business. So you can't elevate a, an associate on this committee? I don't think we have the authority to do that. I think I think it's they're appointed to an associate membership. And so we can't, like, on the spot, That's like, crazy. Because the selection just, of just for what it's worth, because I've been there when they did it, the rec committee, they've got regular members and associate members, and if they don't have enough regular members for a quorum, they'll elevate one of the associates to a voting member. It, it may be. So, it, it should it, say in our bylaw. It may be the case uh, that I just don't know about. I, and I was, I'm not. That's yeah, what they like, told us at the interview with the. the oh, they did. Well, well then, well then, that we the will associates have to, could. I'll have to brush up on that. Well, yeah, it we makes have, sense. In my experience here, we, for the number of years I've been on the board, we have never had the resources to do that. Well, it, well it, we never had the associates. Associate, yeah. We've never, never had them. Well, it's tough to elevate somebody that you, you don't have to elevate. Yeah. Well, Brian, Brian uh, the, um, Sullivan. Sullivan was Social an associate wisdom, member before. <laughs> I just went cross that. So, yeah, there was. You better write this so, down. This stuff is, this well, stuff is gold, baby. We're yammering on and on, but <laughs> well, I, Chuck's not here us, anyway. Is there tell you? us about your background really or group. interest in conservation. Uh, so I am. I have a master's degree in uh, environmental management wow. um, from Duke. Uh, I worked in environmental from consulting. Duke? Yeah. Uh, environmental consulting for eight and a half years doing ecological risk assessment and natural resource damage assessment. I'm now a statistician from the National Marine Fisheries Service in Boston. Wow. Exciting. What are you doing, Boston? Uh, I'm a statistician for the National Marine Fisheries Service. So we keep track of how much fish have been caught do catch projections. And, so you I'm must be one popular with those fishermen. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, most, I mostly work on stuff in the middle. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife works on ground fish up there, and she <laughs> gets more calls from all the I guess. That's going to be a tough, I mean, you're doing the right thing, but yeah. some people are trying to make a living. Yeah. 
That's great. Okay. Wow, yeah, cool. All right. Have you been in Reading long? Uh, we, I grew up in Reading, and then we moved back in 2013. So you can, if you get sworn in, you can join us for the February 12th. Yes. So it's there's. It's gonna be a busy night. There is a a meet. There was a meeting that was supposed Everything. supposed to be on January twenty second. We need a curate machine. And um, yeah. we we are unlikely. Well, we likely can have a quorum now that we have new members. However, a lot of the continued meetings that you heard tonight have already. You know, it's members that have already been there, and so generally you're not supposed to all of a sudden introduce someone new without. Starting all the way from square, square one, so sure. Um, remember that twenty second meeting is going to be can essentially going to be canceled. Well, to move to February. Yeah. Yeah. Everything just pushed that first Carl. first meeting of February. Yeah. <laughs> February twelfth. So, you just anywhere on the bottom. Yeah, so that'll be your, your first time yeah. to, to join us up here. Yeah, um, which will be great. John. Hi, John. Hi. Are you uh, are you one of the full oh, members? Yes. Great. 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 What was your last name? Sullivan. That's my first thought. I said, "Oh, Jack Sullivan lives in in we town." Have, we have a typical um, one engineer, uh, frequently somebody who commonly comes to us. Ordinary. When, I regular. Had, yeah. Usual suspect. His name's usual. Yeah, goes Jack, by Jack, Jack, but his name's John Sullivan. Uh, yeah, he's pretty comfortable at meetings. He goes to a lot of them. Um, are you sworn in yet? Not yet. So um, I was going to contact everyone tomorrow. I didn't get a chance. I just got all the emails today. I was going to contact them tomorrow after we get signed in. But I'll just start sending you uh, whatever comes in, and along with everyone else who's been. And uh, you know, I guess we have a couple members and a couple associate members. So I went through. We've got uh, two new. Mem full members and three associate members. Really? Do you know the background of the other members? Um, no, I got. I was flustered by the emails all this this afternoon. I, I didn't get to see John. I so John was the second one that I got, and after I got the next three, I said, "Okay, I can't do this anymore." <laughs> yeah. uh, we're we're to get to the point where you just needed to be, or just I, I don't care what the other side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're at seven. Oh, we're good. Whatever. We got yeah, John. Fine. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I have to at least three of them. Here. Okay. Uh, so the other full member is Martha Moore, who was either still is or was a uh, biology teacher at high school. I think that's the other one that I looked at. Martha, yeah. Uh, Nicole Mazur, classmates uh, in grad school. She is uh, works for the state in their department. Tay. Yeah. There's also a other kind of you guys all get band together and say we need to join this commission? I like it. <laughs> so what's the background of, uh, of I know the science teacher heard that, your background and uh, your colleague? My, my master's in environmental management and focusing on ecosystem science and uh, landscapes and geospatial analysis. So this is cool. Take it over. <laughs> So, so Chuck, how does it work with the? I mean, so we obviously have know nothing about the associate members. So, so at the meeting, they'll come. They they all come to probably introduce ourselves, get a little bit about our background. Yes. But the way it works is uh, full members can vote. Uh, but the way we'll operate is associate members can do everything in, except vote. So they can talk about uh, the project. They can make input. They can say whatever comes to mind. They have an open. They can sit up here with the rest of us. Oh, wow. so the only vote. thing they can't do is vote. They can make motions. Make motions? No, no, no. no. That's part of the voting process. Yeah. They can't sit in my chair either. They can't, they can't sit in your chair. <laughs> Bob, if, Bob, if you're not sitting in your so, chair, they're sitting. So in it's your pretty chair, satisfying so. to have. I'm pretty sure they're sitting in your chair first. I'll be okay. Yeah. And then we're going to have to get signs. Uh, yeah, you're right. I know maybe we have just enough. All right. So that's, Great. that's, that's the only difference. As, as a I nail know. and a hammer. <laughs> so is there enough for four or five more Not people? Not even close. Five more people? Wow. Um, let me just make sure I didn't mess this up. One, two. Wow, my God. There's only three. Who was it that was sending it to us? Well, there's one chair there. There's three over there. 
Uh, one say, do we have enough chairs? There's five chairs. Do we have there's, enough space? Yeah, there's three there, one here, and one there, right? You well, somebody stole your table. You do, I can see four. Are there three chairs over there? Yes. yes. There's one behind you, Chuck. I mean, I want the stuff. I was chairs. I was counting spaces. No, but one that your stuff is on, and this one over here with this jacket on. That's yeah. five. You need your table back. <laughs> No, I just no, is that, you know what? It's a great problem to have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All this, just, he's been all this stuff that we've gone through. Oh, was, the, uh, wasn't this really table beside here? Yeah, I yeah, it was. Okay, is that so, now, did you know that table's permanent? I don't know. I okay. seem, it seems the table seems a little bit small, but so yeah. it's good to open up your plans and talk about it's it. Psychological ploy. It's lower. It's the right. meaning kind of weak position to be in. So when you deal with us, you have to look up. <laughs> That's how that all works. All right. What's next, Mike? Um, Chuck, what do, well, what do we have left? We enforcement order, perfectos. Yeah, I don't have any pictures of perfectos, but I will tell you that after I sent the enforcement order out to um, the engineer, his site in Andover, and his and certified mail here and regular mail here, he gave me a call. We talked about what he needed to do. I personally don't believe that he parked in that area next to the dumpster. Um, they put a chain up, you see it? And then eventually they put a chain on it, and it was it was pretty good. Um, They're still parking in the area next to that? Did we decide yes. that, that that was okay? Yes. Yeah. If I remember correctly. But, but the amount of vehicles. Yeah, it's only supposed to be three, three vehicles. Three. Yeah. But you pretty fit for <laughs> So he didn't park there. He put a chain across with a sign on it that says no parking. Right. I've Reserve. changed my way of getting into town, and I drive down Main Street, so I see that once a day. Uh, and you guys are welcome to give me a call if you see something different. But I noticed the chain's been up there the whole time. No one's been parked in it. And now there's hay bale in back of it. Um, and I'm assuming when the snow melts this Saturday when it's 60 degrees out and raining, they'll line that other area with the hay bale. Uh, there's a slight incline too, so it's not, the, the hay bale is mostly to prevent five cars from parking up there. He has the permission for three cars. If he can just outline that area, three cars, we're, we're pretty much out of it. We'll talk to him in the spring and, you know, insist on something else going in. Uh, he's telling me that he can't come up with $30,000, $35,000 to do the site improvements that uh, he's uh, kind of agreed to through the planning board. So that's where, where he's at. 35000 you said? Yeah. You know what the site improvements are? Like the sure, he has to put in well vertical granite curbing and he has to grade out that area and so grade it down, cut it away, and then I don't know, line it with any kind of retaining wall. Um, From the other dumpster? Signage, yep, on the other side of the dumpster, the right hand side of the dumpster. And then there was uh, some part of, um, I think he had to do some infiltration because. The existing storm drains, whatever that system is, this is new, so it has to, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm probably saying this wrong, but like requalify. So even if there's enough sizing in that existing storm drain, it's it's not allowed to be used. For, for sign, this is this is what I'm I'm hearing from from uh, Matt Gabriel. I was just looking for this site. I thought I might have it in the last couple of meetings we had, but I don't see it. One of the storm drains that's on Main Street that gets flooded when it rains too much? The only storm drain that I know on Main Street, well, that floods when it rains too much is Willow Street right out in front of Austin Prep. I don't know if there's, there is storm drains there, I you guess. Go by, you go by Home Goods. Yeah. On the right hand side, there's an area of wetland directly across from that living. Okay, yeah. Facility. Those puddles, and that that's a that's a storm drain, I believe, that just goes down a few feet right up to the wetlands. But it must be plugged because you end up with a foot, two feet of water up there sometimes. It's crazy. Well, maybe not two feet, but a good 10, 12 inches of water sometimes. It collects right there. 
I don't know if the drain needs cool. to be cleaned or if it's. But I didn't know <laughs> it's, if this, I know it's if this probably drain flooded. Down here. No, it's I don't probably. know if this drain down here is the same problem. Huh? Well, no, you can see if the drain was running into the land, it would be behind it. There's plenty of space for more water. About a two or three foot drop back there. So that's the state, state road over there? I just didn't know if they had the same problem with the drain down here in front of Perfectus. Didn't want to tax it anymore that's already taxed. His runoff goes right into that what's called the no name brook when you get down by you know, uh, the project at Smith Oil, but it's we call it Walker's Brook. And yeah, their whole system's nine. set up to discharge into there after it's been flushed through a few I don't know, storm scepters and whatnot. So he has Saturday. plenty of runoff potential for his site. Are you guys keep going? Yeah, and he, plus he's higher higher than Walker's Did Brook. Start? So I don't think he's getting flooding. I think he has a, just a tremendous parking problem, just like all those businesses up there. I mean, again, another great problem to have, but you, know, you, need, you, need, you need more parking. I mean, how many, how many employees does he have in the morning? Like five or six? That's six cars, you know? So I have two quick items left. Minutes for approval. Uh, December 11, 2019. Anybody have a chance to review? No changes. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any changes needed. I hear a motion then. Make a motion to <laughs> approve the minutes of December 11, 2019 meeting. Second. All those in favor? All right, and then the last item also was not on the agenda, but our, the Chuck had sent out an email about the MACC conference. Mm -hmm. It's coming up on... February 29th, it's at Holy Cross. Um. I have already registered. I'm going to go. Oh, you found your uh, passcode or you didn't need it? I didn't have one. I, just, I spoke to Chuck because I got to a point where you had to log in to register. To, so I called Chuck and I said, what's my registration? And he said, he said, <laughs> he said, I don't know if they've received the money from the town yet. No, I didn't say that. I said, why would I have it first? And then I said, they just call. I, <laughs> the bill we approved I don't last get, they said, you I don't pay, get your registration. And, and I don't think you guys get your registrations unless you bought access to the, to the book. And they have the, that book online. But so, I thought our town access allowed us a certain number of They've, they've changed it. They want money now. Oh. I think it's been that way for a while. It be easier. Um, Th there is a program um, that gives attendance to new members. Mm -hmm. um, they, they have a grant if you've been a member for, of your con, con for less than a year. They pick, I forget what it was, 15, 15 or 20 people that can go nice free. Meet you. Have a good night. Nice meeting you, John. I look forward to having you on board. So, so the next meeting is February 12th. So, John, I should go wait for when, we, when yes. we're going to we be able to keep one codfish when we go out fishing. For a rec boat? Yeah. Dave's out. I'm traveling. Huh? It's going to be a while. Really? Yeah. I can't come alone. Codfish on a rec boat? No. You will yeah. just be coming alone. I can't. Yeah. I've decided this is the stock. Wait, so can I I'm not register? Sure we already have members coming in. We, we might actually have a We do have a quorum. But they're not but familiar with the projects. Um, and that's what you're saying. It's like Howard Street. Oh, have to, yeah. Howard Street oh. still couldn't meet. Oh. Abel still couldn't meet. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's resources. Yeah. 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 So we can I not register? Or can I register to John? John. Chuck, don't you usually just register the people that are going to sign up? So I, I'll I'll, uh, I should, I'll go. So yeah, I'd like to I'd like to uh, suggest. <laughs> yeah, it's so, right in the email you said. We're excited to tell you that again, offering 20 free admissions as scholarships to the concert for new conservation members or staff, thanks to David Stanley Fund for Stormwater Climate Change and Sea Level. How do you go to the conference? They're first come, first serve. It's free lunch. There he is. Yeah. And uh, yeah. swag new commissioners in the last 12 months. Be nice. It's it's free. Well, it'd be great to get some of the members. So I wanted to um, I wanted to see months? if we could carpool, I so. but I don't want to carpool with Dave. 
You might be you, working home. You don't know. You don't know if he'll bring you home. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if he'll bring me home. Yeah. He's lucky yeah. I was there on the sidewalk. They, they could tie you onto the bumper. Dave kicked me out of his car at the last <laughs> sidewalk. Wait. Well, if Mike hadn't been knew, driving, no, past, no, you would have left him either way. Oh yeah, <laughs> you didn't say you could. You would have been. I was the walking. Paper would have been flying out the window. See ya. Yeah, carpool was a good idea. <laughs> So a lot of people. One of our ex-members are up there. He said, "Next time I'm around, I could just go in and make a sandwich." Remember? <laughs> so are you are you going? Harry. Harry, yeah. Harry. You, you, you have. Uh, I'm going to be on crutches. That's right. Holy cross. Up and down those hills. You're not, not going to want to do that. One of those places that that you want yeah. to be on crutches. You're not, you're not going to sure be able to get a van because they'll it's shuttle. Not, but not like it's in an icy cold. You know what the thing is though. Every time of year, either. If if I I am. When I got the, the email today, I was busy, so I couldn't do it. But I was going to call the lady at MACC <laughs> and find out if all of the things are going to be at the Hogan Center. If all of the things are going to be at, I know lunch is down, but they have like a snack place at the Hogan Center. They do. They do. Downstairs. You know, and someone so. could... And they have elevators yeah. in the Hogan Center. They do. So, That's right. I mean... You could just pack and box lunch. I think yeah. in general, so there's... My recollection when it's been held at Holy Cross Park. Parks lunches for everybody. There's always a session there, right? Yeah. There, there's certain sort of ones that will right. go it's out it's or like, right. somewhere else. Right. But there's always the. It's like getting from Mount right. Washington to the hut in the clouds. Yeah, yeah, basically the, the same. The, the, the <laughs> <I'm laughs> meeting. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You know, so I, you think I was you're there about three times. If that just keep going down. Because it's Holy Cross campus. You know, if I can get one of the the. Pocket space. Okay, so front. the three of us. It's not not in that then? bad. Yeah, so what I would do is uh, I wouldn't drive to here. I oh. figure there's something, there's a, is, is there's a parking lot on the way. I would go there. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Should we come visit? Uh, yeah, it's at the Hogan. Yeah. yeah. So, Mike, what are you know, thinking? Does it say, I like, can't if go. you I'm look at the, the breakout weekend. sessions, are they all at the Hogan? What time is it? Project managers are in the morning. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty much starts at ten thirty, I believe, and then goes to about three thirty or four. Yeah. All right, like so that. everything's like an hour and fifteen minutes. Eight, the <laughs> opening session, the they opening do. talk is eight thirty. Do you guys go for that? Keynote address is nine thirty. Um, the the, the units minute. start around nine forty-five. I saw three. I would nine forty-five. Oh, so you, you can we can go and then not. Uh, Workshop is 9.45 You don't have 11. to go to every single one. You can use one of those carpool. times to walk around. And I don't know. It, 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 you know, you look at that and you go, well, what's what's happening in my town? And do any of these mm -hmm. things, you know, help me understand it better? And I, get, I don't know. I mean, okay. the guy you talked about a couple link. of years ago, you right. talked about birds and climate change <laughs> and how how he relates Stop birds there. and climate change. Right. Yeah, that there's birds that are like in this this area of Massachusetts never here before. Never they never came be, ab above like New Jersey. Never saw them in you know. And now even so this guy was saying that that um, he's seeing them in northern New Hampshire. And he said uh, he said in two two thousand forty five, which is not really that far away. I won't that, be here. That, but he said that in order to see I New England, New England weather, <laughs> traditional New England weather, you'd have to go about the, the latitude of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Exactly. It's going to be. That's that's huge jump between now Boston and Halifax, Nova Scotia, in 25 years. Yeah. yeah. That's big. It is. The extent of winter snow is going to be halfway in Maine, whereas now it's down, it was down near Pennsylvania, the bottom yeah. of Pennsylvania. That line is going to move up to, I know, you got to. Yes, there is, there is. Don't uh, buy a nice snowblower, it's not I think working. Number, no. number two is calling Bob's name. Number two? Yeah. Do you see it over there? Um, On the agenda? How, How to, to be an effective, effective conservation, conservation commissioner. commissioner. How to be an effective what? Conservation, Conservation Commission. Like he's gonna, he's gonna teach that class. Yeah. Chuck, did what? you sign up for some of these? Are you? I haven't done it yet. These? I was. You say it's calling my name? Yeah. Because I already selected what I was gonna. They're looking for. So am I a commissioner now? 
Yeah. But I'm just not effective. Is that your point? <laughs> it's gonna, you're going to be more effective. <laughs> yeah. I'm making, I heard Chuck. I'm how, sorry. I'm <laughs> making the state wor state house work for you. Beavers and bogs. Now, maybe. Blow those up. And get I thought beyond the building code, I was like, what is that? Sure, how to detonate a beaver's hut or something? Or? <laughs> oh, that's not conservation. All right. What item twenty four, series D. All right. So I suggest everybody sign up. That can go. And yeah, I'm not going to do any of the climate resilience stuff. I, we are just living it 24-7 in Arlington, so I, I think I could probably teach that class. I, I suggest we send this information to our new well. members as well. Yeah. I suggest we send this information to our new members as well. Um, and maybe one of them will get the new member first come, first serve stuff. I bet you all the popular breakout sessions are probably already full. Yeah. I know you have that comes up. You can just up. you can just go. I don't think I went to any of the ones I signed up for. Dave, when you know, I went. Yeah. I've gone. I've called the two days before and yeah. gone and just walked in. Yeah. And they, they just. If, I don't you see just, anything. You just show up at the room that you want to go to. It's February yes. 12th. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> pick the, pick the open one and show up where you want to go. Right. So, Nick, February 12th. So, well, anyways, I did find four that I could go to. I don't know if I would do all four, but um, I thought, you know, there's there's a few. I can't remember which ones. Well, how to treat fellow commissioners in there? <laughs> <laughs> it's all in there. <laughs> it's all in there. All right. Any other items? Making the state house work for you. Any second? Oh, look it. I, can I make a motion to adjourn? Somebody already made the motion. Second. Oh, second. second. All those in favor? Oh. So, well, we still have the February meeting. I could ask if anybody wants to carpool. I'm just thinking. We have two February. I wanted to carpool. I just wanted to let you know that I would. Oh, I could just drive to Home Depot. I didn't expect. You know, I figured I was getting a ride from somewhere. You can hop into my truck, but I'm, I would go to Home Depot and. Waltham, and you have to drive past that anyways. We have two two February meetings before this happens. If we have one more meeting to coordinate that. Yeah. Two? <laughs> two meetings? Looking at me. <laughs> two meetings. Yeah, Dave, you know, um, I don't know how we're going to rebuild. How, is there anything here about rebuilding two. your relationship right. with a, the, after being cast out from a car? <laughs> there's nothing. There's You're lucky so I didn't run you he's over. Like, he's there's, like, there's, there's a reason why it's not. He was like, Dude, you're out of here. I'm not even driving you home. Yeah. <laughs> he gave him his stuff and said, yeah. Go. You're out. Go. <laughs> I go really and then he called Tough John. Love, like, Tough love. Hey, John, what's going on? I was talking to John. I was I was going, how'd you, how'd you know we were there? And he goes, he's got one of those. Uh,